Hello everyone. This is a test of the Banggood 20 amp 1200 watt DC to DC buck up converter. And before I start complaining about it, I wanted to just register that it's actually a very good unit. I'm very pleased with it. The complaints are very minimal uh, given the cost. And the first thing that I wanted to say was how it arrived. It did arrive in two weeks, so relatively quick. Uh, however, Banggood shipped it in this bag, which was, uh, the unit was inside this dusty bag. It looked like it had been sitting on the shelf for a while. And it was only wrapped in this. And so, of course, it took quite a beating coming here. One of the capacitors was nicked and bent over. And I gently pushed it back, and it appears not to have affected it, so the connectors were still uh, intact. So that was the one thing that I was surprised at of how we ship Banggood. Please ship these in a box, please. Uh, okay, so now into the uh, talking about the unit itself. These connectors, the screws are going to be very tight. Hang on to them with a pair of pliers or get a good grip on them with your hands because you will break them off if you twist them because it's just getting them loose. They're not attached to the board very well. I plan on hard soldering it. Sorry about the traffic there, guys. I have a highway next to me. I plan on hard soldering both ends once I decide how I'm going to install this unit. It did arrive a little different than the unit described. This appears to be a newer version. So the there is no jumper pin for the input voltage above 20 volts. It had this potentiometer which is okay, except that I don't know exactly where or how it should be adjusted. There are no connection points, terminals, to put a meter anywhere along this path to determine what voltage is actually being fed in to the regulators. And the unit came with no documentation at all. So uh, that's that. I left it alone. I didn't adjust it. I left it there. I'm running from a 12-volt deep cycle battery, and I'll explain that in a moment what I intend to uh, use this unit for. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I wanted to replace this DC motor that went onto this screw drive here. Uh, as you can see, it's a kind of um, worm drive. I wanted to replace it because it wasn't strong enough or fast enough for the purpose. It actually was strong enough, but not fast enough. And I decided to use a universal motor that was found inside a grinder, an angle grinder. And by the way, it's really hard to get the shaft from there, a worm drive shaft, and align it well using a stick welder. If you're a TIG welder, I suppose you can do it without ruining the motor completely. Um, so this goes in here. It's already been tested, works great. And this will give me the voltage that I need to drive a 110 volt, 4.3 amp universal motor. Now, you may know that a universal motor can be powered by AC or DC. For those of you that don't know what a universal motor is, it's what you find in all your uh, appliances. Basically, it's a brushed motor. It doesn't have permanent magnets. Uh, this is from a vacuum cleaner. So it, if it has brushes and no permanent magnets, then it's a universal motor and you can power it with DC. In fact, it actually likes DC more. It runs quieter and cooler. All right, we're gonna test this. Uh, the other thing I discovered actually when I was playing with it, and I'm very pleased with the unit, is that it's going to, allow, I'm gonna order a bunch of these. It will allow you to recover the use of a lot of power tools that you previously stopped using because maybe your batteries had run out. So as you can see here, I've got a bunch of old tools here with different size batteries. And some of these tools were really great tools. The Makitas, for example, uh, and this saw, uh, a small weed trimmer, uh, and the batteries. So I'm gonna demonstrate that you can actually use this unit to power all of these. Uh, a Sawzall, for example. And um, here we go. Let's, let's give this unit a test. One of the things that I saw that is different Oh, I think I talked about that, what, what was actually different and what wasn't. So let's go ahead and fire up the unit. Okay, real quick, something else I need to mention. In the course of playing with this saw, uh, circular saw, sorry about the lighting there, can you see that? And uh, trying to cut some things with it, I actually blew the fuses, but it wasn't the saw that did it. Um, what happened to blow the fuses more often 
was this Makita drill, which is actually only an 18 volt drill, but I think it uses inductive braking because whenever I release the trigger, I, I got a surge back into the, the unit or through the unit, at least it appeared to be that way. And then the amps would cause the fuses to blow. And what it came with were these two, no, not those two, these 100 volt 15 amp fuses. 200 volt 15 amp fuses. You can't see them, but it doesn't matter. And so I replaced it with two automotive 12 volt 15 amp fuses. And they lasted about as long, but they blew also. So the next thing I'm going to do is replace it with, I looked on, I used a calculator to calculate my amp requirements. So probably if I'm going to use 12 volts rather than 100 into the unit, I need to replace it with two 30 amp automotive fuses. Uh, keep in mind, if you do that, these fuses are not common around here, the size. But what you can do is just take a grinder and grind those pins down so that they fit better. Let me show you an example. So I just had to grind these down with my little hand grinder or my Dremel so that they would fit. So I'll sh I'm going to do that. I need to replace these 15 amps and replace them with 30 amps and then we'll fire it up and I'll show you. All right, so here we go. The battery right now is not hooked up to the battery charger, so it's putting out about 12.75 volts. When the unit arrived and I plugged it in, it was putting out about 19.5 volts. I didn't touch the amps, I left the input voltage the same, so they're going to keep it minimal for you. Right now we have it hooked up with a couple of jumpers. Oops, sorry about that, I'm gonna wire wrapped around here. We've got the unit hooked up with a couple of jumpers to this 3.4 amp 110 volt angle iron. Come on, focus. There we go. Oh, sorry, 4.3 volt uh, amp angle iron. And it has a universal motor in there. And it's very similar to our test subject for which this unit was purchased. It'll be driving that worm drive which is for a piece of farm equipment to open up a gate. So it only has to run for about 10 seconds. And I don't really fear it getting hot. I do have a cooler on here as recommended by other customers. And let's give it a try. So we turn on the angle iron. And right now the amps are so low that it did drop the voltage a little bit. The angle iron doesn't spin up very fast, obviously. but. Let's increase the amps just a little bit. And then we're going to start increasing the voltage. We're going to take it all the way up to 80 volts. There we go. It's 43. Let's get our maximum at 75 volts. 75 volts. But let me show you the, the difference when you adjust the amperage. Here's the startup speed. Not bad, actually. Let's increase the amperage. We just crank it down. Better. You have a lot of room for adjustment on these potentiometers. Much faster, much more power. I don't have any meters that will, that will measure DC amperage. I highly recommend that you attempt to measure DC amperage either on the out or the end so that you can get a good idea. But there's also the alternative of just popping fuses until you figure out where the sweet spot is. So... Power. Let's demonstrate a few other tools here. Let's start playing around a little bit with this unit. Let me get those set up for you. All right, here's the Makita 12 volt cordless drill hooked up, and I've got it cranked back down to 21 volts. 
and you can see what's really great about this option if you plug it into power tools is that you can overdrive these and also the gearing options on these as well as any um, universal motor a cheap drill for example it's great for hobbies if you're into robotics uh, or if you need uh, servos for say a telescope mount or any other kind of machines that you're building like I said universal motors super common very powerful uh, and so these also the gearboxes give you a lot of options for uh, machine building. So we're at, we crank down the amps. And let's crank up the amps a little bit so we get better response. Okay, now let's crank the voltage and show you. Well, we probably don't want to go too much higher on the voltage. It'll go pretty fast. So, it's, the unit handles very well the voltage fluctuations, even though with this particular unit it doesn't show it. But it can you can have other electronics in between, such as the speed controller on a drill. And you don't have to unload the unit. That's also very nice. So 44 volts, a 12 volt drill with 44 volts. All right, let's try something else. Okay, now we're gonna pass, test the circular saw. This is the one where I kept blowing the fuses on also because I would overdrive it. So I'm not gonna do it this time. Uh, I really like this particular saw, so I'm gonna use this a lot with this. Right now, I am at 24 volts. This is an 18 volt system. And we'll increase the amps a little bit. I think it's up already. Sorry about the noise. Increase the voltage and show you how you can overdrive it. All right, 40 was about the max, wouldn't go any faster. And next up is the weed trimmer. All right, boys and girls, last test. We've got the weed trimmer set up, 24 volts, and here we go. We're going to increase the volts and the amps also. This is actually a 24-volt Black & Decker. something new. There is an amperage limiter. I saw a blue LED turning on right in this area and that's what that cycling was that you heard. When I tried to increase the amps, there was a blue LED turning on right here. But there's nothing that indicates what that LED is for. There's another LED next to it. Uh, the one that turned on says you UV, looks like UVLO, and the one next to it is OCP. These aren't very good. Bang good, we really need some documentation for this unit so we can know what these mean, but apparently I did drive the voltage and amperage combination beyond what the unit can handle without blowing out the fuses. 
but it looked like it was regulating itself, which is very cool. So again, this is the motor that's going to be driven. I'm very excited about the possibilities of universal motors and DC motors. This is a rock solid unit, works very well. Never got hot, I had lots of cooling on it, not even warm. And the voltage is very stable under multiple conditions. So good luck guys, I'm gonna be ordering more of these units and I hope you do too.